This is an interesting video, right? This is courtesy of the We Might Be Drunk podcast. It features Mark Norman, I forgot the other guy's name, and obviously Ari is his guest. And they share this anecdotal story about Lex Friedman. It's interesting because Lex Friedman purports himself to be the love guy, purports himself to be the kindness guy, all this sort of malarkey, right? Very very soft-spoken, quiet type of dude, right? Um, butter wouldn't melt or whatever. But people have always hypothesized that underneath all that fucking vignette of fucking naivete and, you know, sincerity and shit is a very rageful guy, right? Somebody that would duppy somebody if need be. And I think this video is proof that the whole charade of like, I love this and I love everybody thing is a charade. Because look at what Mark Norman said about Lex Friedman and how he acts in real life. This is really surprising but also not surprising when I initially heard this clip. And if I remember correctly, I think they did clip this and put this up on their highlights channel. Then they took it down. So I'm assuming Lex Friedman probably reached out to them and said, hey, you know, please, no. But listen to this clip. This is from the podcast, We Might Be Drunk, Mark Norman's podcast with the other dude, I forgot his name. Um, listen to what they say about um, Lex Friedman and how he is in person, in real life. How did she get these names? Like, I, she, I had did, she did a... Uh glassman's podcast that they had that stacked sense of humor and then just like right exactly it was like big and then it's drake but i was big and new just like everybody likes huberman everybody like lex friedman everyone's like oh i'm gonna invite him to my wedding I'm like you didn't even know it existed four months ago <laughs> <laughs> what the I fuck are we talking about he gets about, elon like, musk he gets tucker uh -huh. carlson he gets rogan he gets all these giant names and he's just like an mit robot yeah but nice guy. <laughs> <laughs> I did the pod. He was nice. Good teacher. Really seems to care. <laughs> <laughs> you did his pod. It was fun. It was super fun. Yeah, he just asked good questions. He's yeah, a smart dude. Fuck are they, oh, you autistic doft. <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. <laughs> hey, both your own versions of autism. <laughs> you had a yeah, you're the most charming autism ever. Hey, I'll take it. <laughs> you did make you seem fucking normal. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you got to do, I think. You yeah, hang out with that dude. Exactly. Yeah. Compared to him, I was like a uh, you know. He's you your like. Charmer. He's your like. If you're a seven chick and and you hang out with a four. That's it. Four. That's <laughs> for, for socialization. Well, what's fun is uh, I he we did it in a hotel in New York. He was. In town for some reason and the printer wasn't working in the lobby and i got to watch him yell at the the lady behind the desk and that was weird seeing him not be that robot guy he was like what the hell the printer doesn't work get your shit together and some girl like i, I don't know <laughs> see how mad that is the funny thing about that is that rogan and a few other people have this common line they always trot out like you know one of the lines they say oh there's only a thousand great comedians in the world um um, be the hero of your own story all these sort of like you know anecdotal phrases they all throw always throw out and one of the things they always say is that you should always treat servers nice isn't it right it's like a thing that they kind of pride themselves on right treating like service industry people well like not getting angry not being a dickhead and basically saying oh you can judge a lot about somebody by how they treat a service industry person i think it also extends in dating i've heard somebody people say in dating i've heard people say in dating like if you're a woman and you're going out with a guy there's a suggestion that you should always try and have the first date in a very public venue where there's a lot of random people around to see how they navigate around, like maybe a busy bar, busy restaurant to see how they deal with that situation. So you can probably tell a lot about that person's character and how they are, personality, by how they kind of, you know, deal with maybe having to wait a bit longer for the table, maybe getting bumped by somebody going to the toilet, maybe a bartender taking too long, you can tell. So all that being said, these guys pride themselves on being such great guys who tip the most to service industry workers who always a pleasure to be around and all of these cafe people that are working with Starbucks are happy to see them all sort of sort of shit. But the truth is, Lex Friedman is out here barking at hotel receptionists when the hotel when the hotel printer don't work. He probably does this quite often. He probably does because you know most of his podcasts he records them in like these lavish rooms and shit with black curtains around him. So probably that's what he likes to do. You'll fly into a city, major one, and just like you know post up and probably bang out a few podcasts and record them back to back in hotel rooms. But you'd imagine he'd have a bit of patience because hotels, you know, especially people that work at the front desk, they have a million things to kind of look after and uh, things to deal with. It's not like you you are their only fucking one concern. And stuff like printers, stuff like envelopes no so sort of like getting mail delivered there stuff like maybe whatever you you could you could extend them a bit of grace because it's not things that are like an immediate necessary concern yes it's nice if you can, can get something printed out at the fucking hotel printer but most common people a regular person sensible person practical person if you actually didn't need something to be printed 
you just find your local Kinko's or something, right? Or a local print shop in the area and just go get printed. And usually in areas where there are hotels, you, you, you probably could find a print shop not too far around. So if you did need to print something, you could. Or if, if, that, if it's that necessary, and again, Lex Freeman's making so much money in his fucking pod anyway, why don't you just bring a printer with you? You're already bringing fucking, you know, red cameras. You're bringing fucking, you know, um, Shaw SMB7s and shit. You know, you're bringing mic stands. You're bringing fucking, you know, big fucking box lights. If you can bring all that stuff, why not just bring a printer with you so that you can print to your heart's content? So to hear Lex Friedman is the type of person to be barking at a fucking hotel receptionist who's just trying to do a job makes a lot of sense because underneath that vignette of like, oh, I'm just a naive guy. I don't really know what I'm doing is a rage filled person. Like it's all of, it's all a hoax. It's all a, it's all a ruse. Um, and I think we've all kind of, we can sense the insincerity of it. I think that's why people call him out. I think that's why he's, you know, a person that's so quick to block. I think even I might be blocked from him, which I don't, which is way wild because I don't directly talk about anybody. I will never tag somebody if I'm going to say something. I'll just write what I write. So most likely somebody's searching for his name and seeing people that he that you know say not anything mean and just blocking because he believes in like blocking with love or something. Some sort of stupid addict thing. I think I remember him saying where he's not able to kind of receive any kind of you know um, what you call it negative or contradictory you know basically opposing constructive strict, strict criticism content or feedback back his way. But he's also the kind of person that will bark and shout at a fucking hotel receptionist. So it's more proof if ever you needed it that that you know when people are when people go overboard to be like you know to signify that they're a great person that they're a lovely person usually is hiding something sinister. Um, and I think that you know the uh, what you got the same could be said for um who's that rapper that recently got divorced? He made that album about loving his wife, and then you know a few months or you know a couple of years later he's divorcing his wife. It's like yeah, the guys who are always out there like trying to overly prove to the internet that they're the best husbands in the world are usually the ones doing their partners the worst at home do you know what I mean that's usually the truth of it unfortunately so but yeah not surprised to hear Lex Friedman's a bit of a cunt in real life not surprised to hear that Lex Friedman is a bit of a cunt in real life I'm not surprised to hear that he's a bit of a cunt